Hello, this is Dr. Christy Lukes, and this is our lesson for ChemEng 3140 uh, Continuous Mass Transfer for Friday, uh, September 7th. We've been starting to look at unsteady state diffusion, and these are our equations for rectangular coordinates, cylindrical coordinates, and spherical coordinates. And these are the overriding equations. So they're first order in time and second order in position. Because these equations are partial differential equations, the solution is fairly treacherous. And so what we find is that, well, we can borrow from all of the work that was done by people studying heat transfer, because that's a very large group of people. But to do that, we need a translator's guide. And so table 711 is our translator's guide. Now, a lot of these are gonna use K. K is the uh, distribution coefficient from our thermodynamics. And so it's gonna be the concentration in the liquid and the vapor or at the surface of our solid or liquid that we're talking about. And in many cases, we'll be able to say K is equal to one or close enough to one, in which case we can use this first column shown here. And if K is not equal to one, then we'll need to use this column. And in our homework that I've given you, you'll be using the formulas out of the second column. And what we're going to do is we're going to, if I see a formula that has, say, this ratio of temperatures here, I'm going to translate it to the appropriate ratio of concentrations. Or if I have these combinations of alpha, which is a thermal uh, constant that combines... Uh, the thermal conductivity, the density, and the heat capacity. Well, we can replace that with this expression over here, so the alpha will become a diffusivity. And we're going to have similar things for all the various terms that show up. We also have a lot of dimensionless quantities that we are using. And these are partially the same as what we've used before, such as the Reynolds number. You're familiar with that. And then we have some new ones, or some that are just slight variations on these. The notation in our textbook is going to be a capital N to indicate it's one of these dimensionless numbers, and then with the subscript that corresponds to which dimensionless quantity we mean. And each of these are going to be a ratio of various driving forces. So, for instance, the Schmidt number is a ratio of momentum diffusivity to mass diffusivity. So we end up with mu over rho, and then that over the diffusivity, or as written here is an easier way to calculate it. We'll have a lot of these, and I'm going to just kind of leave this with you, and you can look these up as you need them, but you're going to see that a lot of these are going to combine for instance, this first one here combines momentum and mass. This last one combines heat transfer and mass. And then these others are about really what's going on um, for our mass transfer specifically. We have a lot of problems that kind of fall into this category being finite media. When we did these in heat transfer, one of the ways that we could solve a problem such as how much was conducting across a flat plate or how much was conducting radially from a cylinder or a sphere, there were some formulas that get very complicated because they involve Bessel functions, which most of us are not all that familiar with. But instead, uh, there are some things called Heisler charts. And I distributed those Heisler charts to you in class the other day and said, just hang on to them. This is where we're going to start looking at those. So you're going to combine the Heisler charts that were created for heat transfer with those tables from the previous screen 
to solve mass transfer problems. This is, I'm just looking at the ones for cylinders for the sake of argument, but they all are something like this. There's going to first be a graph that's going to be the center temperatures of an infinite cylinder or of a sphere or of a infinite flat plate. And we're going to have one axis over here, which is going to be a ratio of temperatures, or for us, we're going to translate that to concentrations. We're going to have this grouping here that is for like this particular line is for 1 over the BO number equal to 80. It's K over HR is what we had for heat transfer. And now for mass transfer, we're going to translate that with our diffusivity. And so each one of these lines has a value of this 1 over BI for any of those graphs. Across the bottom, we're going to introduce the time variable. So it's alpha t over r squared. We're going to find that it's the diffusivity times t over r squared for our purposes. Each of these lines, whichever one we choose to follow, is going to tell me about the properties of the material. So I'll choose that based on my material. The y-axis is going to tell me about the concentration ratios, and so how concentration varies between the center and the initial and the edge or surroundings. And the bottom axis, the x-axis, is going to introduce time. And so at what time do I have a particular concentration? If you look at um, the next graph, it's actually, and I don't have that one shown in my slides here, but the next graph is actually just a close-up of the top left corner of the first graph, just because it gets hard to read up there. The second actual graph is going to show you about the off-center temperatures of an infinite cylinder, a flat plate, a sphere, whatever. This 1 over bi, so again, the properties of the material, is going to be across the bottom. This is going to be ratios of the temperatures on and off the center line. So T naught is at the center, T infinity is the surroundings, and T is going to be the temperature at a particular location. We identify the location using each of these curves. So again, this is measuring radially in a cylinder. This is going to be at the edge, this bottom curve. This is at the edge, capital, or when R is equal to capital R, then this quantity, this ratio is one. So this is the edge. This is the center. So it has a value of one because what we're going to do is we're going to combine this with our data for what's the temperature or concentration at the center. And I get that from the first graph. So therefore, the ratio is just going to be 1 at the center, and it's going to be some number least like 1 at the edge, and varying with different values of ratios from the center to the edge. The final graph is the rate of heat transfer from an infinite cylinder, and we're going to actually find that this one really doesn't have a lot of applicability for us at this point in time. There are analytical solutions that describe these. These are the solutions, but you see that they are infinite sums, and for instance on the cylinder, it involves Bessel functions, these J, Bessel function order one and order zero. And the lambdas are gonna be the solutions that are solved here, okay? So these are periodic functions, so there's a bunch of different possible answers that you could get, and you need to know which one to use each time, right? Um, so you're gonna have this Periodic function is going to generate infinitely many lambdas, which are going to determine your parameters to do these sums. And you can do that 
okay? It is possible to do those sums and get the answer that way. But the math is a little bit tricky, and so therefore the Heisler charts are an easier way of doing this. So we're going to break the video at this point, and we are going to come back in the next little lesson and talk about an example. Thank you very much for your time.